Hey there, it is Monday Meetup. Welcome back. Um, my name is Araya, and I'm here every Monday at 12.12, ideally. And um, today we're going to talk about meditation. Uh, I put it out there to have some requests, and someone mentioned it recently, um, that they would love to talk about meditation, and that's one of my favorite subjects. So absolutely, we're going to go there, and then maybe if we have time, we'll, we'll do a card reading for today. Um, Energy today feels definitely moving into fall, a little slowdown, a little uh, introspective day, and that's perfectly in line with meditation too. So where do I start with meditation? I'm going to share my journey, um, what it was like to learn how to meditate, um, how it opened up something inside of me, and um, then if you have other questions, please, please feel free to post them. Uh, whether it's right now live or if you're watching the replay and you have a question, um, please post it because I did used to teach and I will get to that during this story. Hey, Kayla, nice to see you. Um, so good timing. We're just diving into meditation and it's right now 2017. I actually learned to meditate 20 years ago in 1997. Um, I found myself in a Buddhist monastery in Thailand. I was one of these adventurous youth with a backpack and a one-way ticket to Bangkok and I went all over Thailand, I went all over Asia and India and Bhutan and Nepal and um, when you find out when you're traveling like that, you get connected with other travelers and you hear about things of great experiences they had or things that you have to go check out or um, you know, go f here, go there and the monastery was something that had been in my guidebook that I had read about but I had run across some other travelers who had been there and um, apparently it was a, a challenge to do. What they offered every month was a 10 day silent meditation retreat. So that right there is super hard for people to not speak. Today's world without your phone and your social media for 10 days would really um, almost heart stop some people. So this was, yes, before um, the advent of pocket-sized cell phones, and um, I just felt called to go. I felt called to try it. And go, so going, you go in and you sign up, and it's two, day, two meals a day. You get a light breakfast and a light lunch and no meal in the evening. And it's perfectly designed to get people actually into the experience of connecting to meditation, connecting to what that greater thing is. So all these things do have an effect. So the very light vegetarian diet, they got us up at sunrise every day. Um, we had very austere um, living situation. I basically had a cement slab that was maybe three feet off the ground that was like a little cot bed um, with a straw mat on it. And um, boy, if I tried that now, I think my back would really, really hate me. But um, at the time it was perfect. And you know, you got up, you bathed, you went through their routine. We had morning meditation, uh, meditation practice and teaching throughout the day. And so there were several seated times um, and then an evening one at sunset. Because the times of sunset and sunrise are very auspicious um, and effective as far as connecting to the realms. There is something about those times of day in the wee hours when the sun is just cresting or just falling that actually makes that connection really um profound or easier to access. So it took me, they actually go through and teach you basics, which I ended up doing years later. Um, when I was 2003, in the winter of 2002 to 2003, that my internal practice was finally on track. And even though I, it was like riding a bike for me, which for not everyone is going to have that experience. I've had a lot of past lives going in no phone for 10 would actually be incredible. I know, right, Kayla? I would love to get rid of my phone and, and all that stuff for 10 days. <coughs> but um, going in and having a set time each day for me later on in my life, I learned it was like riding a bike for me. As I was saying, not everybody has a lot of past lives where they've spent time doing that already. So my soul just immediately within three or four days it still took me that many days to really focus and follow what they were saying about following the breath so meditation always has a focal point people say well, what is transcendental meditation what is um, vipassana meditation 
you know, what is a, a guided meditation? And basically, all the different opportunities to meditate out there are giving you something to focus on so that your mind can stay busy. Because your mind wants to be busy all the time, right? So you need to give it a focal point of one single activity. And so for me, I keep going in my nose because I taught Vipassana style or Anapanasati, which is breathing in and breathing out. So the focus is on the breath all the way in and all the way out. Transcendental meditation uses a mantra that you repeat over and over again. And that mantra is usually given by your teacher or guru or something that comes to you. Um, Guided meditation, you're following the voice, the soundtrack of someone speaking. And um, just those are just examples. There's always a focal point, and that's to allow the mind to stay in one particular place so that the soul can actually get so quiet that it can, you can connect to it. And so for me, the key in meditation is that connection. Once you get there, once you start having glimpses of it, it's almost like the internal exercise on the third eye, both front and back on this chakra, is what gets honed in and continually doing your meditation practice. And maybe you can get quiet for two minutes the first time. Great start. It's two minutes more than you were quiet before, right? With a goal of continually making that greater and greater and greater, so that as you get quiet longer, at some point you start to realize that there is a doorway that is opened and all of a sudden you're having insight flashes of um, maybe a color, maybe an image. I remember in my journal, some of the first images I had were like a pearl or a key or um, a spot of color. And then I would just allow and I would ask I would just sort of put my intention there to understand what that meant. What was the message with that? And as you put your intention out there, that information will slowly come. So maybe you see a pearl and I just let it sit and reflect for me and show me what it wanted to say. Pearl is insight, pearl is wisdom. And I remember that in writing in my journal that, oh my, I was so excited that I actually saw something and actually got a clue of, of what something beyond me was trying to communicate to me. So that's where meditation becomes just a real gift because once you open that doorway and start exercising that muscle, the third eye is a muscle, both directions, front and back on that chakra. And so you actually have to practice that. Um, one of my friends, Shauna Grace, who's a wonderful psychic, she's <coughs> rated one of the top um, five in the country, I believe, and, and definitely one of the top angel channelers, and she's a medical intuitive. And she um, has this great exercise where you actually are opening the lid on that internal third eye to exercise that lid opening. So I'm visualizing that, and whatever you can do to start exercising that is what's gonna slowly make it deeper and deeper. So not getting into a full-blown meditation course, but more about the, the benefits because I do, um, I am creating a digital meditation course so that people can download it, have it um, with them because I did get led to actually create and teach based on what I learned in the monastery, um, my guides, five years later. And so there's always a perfect timing in your life of when it's time for you to really grab hold of it. Five years later, I was told to um, start meditating every morning and I took a minimum of an hour, which is a lot. And sometimes I allowed it to be two hours because that was my focus on my journey at that time. But when you start a practice, you don't wanna make the demand on yourself too great. Because if you have too much of a staunch, oh, I have to do 30 minutes every day, and you don't do it, you're gonna start kicking yourself or going into self-punishment or disappointment or, oh, I gotta be better at this when really you want to build slowly enough to make it something you desire to do for that long every day. My internal calling, my internal compass was saying at least an hour, allow it to be more. Because that was where my soul was taking me at that point. And maybe your soul is doing that too right now. But maybe your soul is just saying, let's learn what meditation is. Let's learn about this whole thing that meditation does for me. So five minutes of getting quiet and then maybe eight minutes, and then maybe 12 minutes, slowly building it up because as you make that connection and you start to discover something inside of yourself that is giving you information back, that's gonna increase the desire to, oh, 
I want to go in. I want another message. I want more. I want to know what, uh, I want a symbol or I want a drawing or I want something. And so going in with the idea that every time you meditate, having a journal next to you when you come out gives you a place to write it down so that you can refer back to it later. Even if it's just thoughts of, gosh, I got nowhere today. It was really awful. And, you know, I hate this meditation. My knees hurt. My, my positioning hurts. And that is part of what I teach too in, in the class is positioning because it is important. Um, so just on that note, making sure that you're in a position upright so that you won't fall asleep when you're first learning. That's key. They had us on med meditation benches um, or a pillow posture that uh, for some people, they can't bend their knees. You don't have to be in a lotus position. You don't even have to be in a cross-legged position. But um, finding a comfortable position upright, whether it's a chair or on cushions between your legs or a meditation bench, um, does make it so that you can let go of the body and release, let your body go heavy and just be internal. So um, as I was saying, my meditation practice that five years later, my internal guides started really giving me directives of what to do. Um, I had insight and information coming and I had a lot of journaling going on. And then I was told to actually create that meditation course. And um, another beautiful aspect of meditation is the community that you build with it. Because I was teaching every Thursday night for three years, um, I did a beginner course that was six or seven weeks long, and then I started doing advanced courses or a weekly meditation group so that people could start coming and having a regular time to come meditate together. Because what happens when you meditate together? And I know this is part of why my experience in the... Um, ashram in the temple in Thailand was so profound was that there were probably a hundred people in the room, some very advanced meditators, but others all with the same intention and focus. So also building that group energy adds a dynamic that helps. So if you have a place in your community where you can go to even practice, we have here a Buddhist temple here in Reno that uh, I know offers meditation on a regular basis. Um, but yoga centers, that was what we had in Wyoming. We started a yoga and meditation center, which is where I was teaching every Thursday night. Um, beautiful thing is it's still running. I love that. We started it as a co-op, a uh, small town of 8,000 people in Wyoming, and it is still going. There's still a meditation yoga studio many years after I left. I left there 11 years ago, and I find that really beautiful. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them. I know I'm just talking a bit of basics, but... Um, to me, that cornerstone, that connection through meditation and really getting the third eye, that internal vision connection to open up is um, what for me is the cornerstone of my whole practice. All of my psychic abilities, all of my remembering of my greater self, my past life memories, um, anything from the realm beyond the physical comes through that meditative space, in my experience, uh, unless you're having someone else do a reading for you. And even then, they're connecting through their own space in that way um, to get that information. So that's really what I see as the cornerstone of everybody's spiritual practice. If they are opening up to God, to angels, to themselves, to guides, um, meditation is the doorway. Meditation is the practice that can open all those paths within you. And it does take time. Um, if you have past lives or experience with on a soul level where you've been in that place before and, and had that as a gift, maybe you were a Buddhist monk. I know I've had lifetimes as a, as a Buddhist monk, so that was one of those things that was already in place for me energetically. Maybe you have that too. Maybe you don't, and it'll be a little bit harder of a learning curve. Not harder, but slower. Um, just stick with it because when you have a desire for something, that runs the show. Everything that your heart desires you is possible. You can bring it into your life and actually succeed at it. So um, if meditation is on your list, um, go for it. If you are needing some assistance with meditation, please reach out because I, I did teach. I am creating a uh, meditation course. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be available to download, but I can certainly work one-on-one -on -one with someone. <coughs> as part of session work to um, enhance that skill or gift. So how about we finish with a um, reading? Let's just go ahead and do a card reading today and see what information comes. 
about a meditation practice for you. So let's just hold that question out there is meditation practice um, and how it would benefit you in particular watching this right now, whether it's live or on the replay and um, just hold that out. And I'm feeling this one right here. The Queen of Michael, brilliant, self-reliant, insightful, humorous. So I'll put it this way so you can actually see the card. Um, you know exactly what to do. The benefit of experience. A time for your career rather than relationships. So to me, this Queen of Michael, brilliant self-reliance, that's what the meditation gift brings you. Absolute self-reliance, not needing to go anywhere else other than internal to get your answers, your guidance, to feel that greater connection to something bigger and greater than yourself, which to me is God. It's everything beyond us, which is fueled by that um, source of creator at the core of it. And so I hope that's helpful for you today. I would love to work with you if you're having challenges in your life. Um, my one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, are either one-offs or I do a three-month program with people. That's my signature program that I posted about last week. Again, the Transformation Springboard program is a phenomenal mover of things in your life. When you want to get stuff um, really shifting, get clarity on it, get movement forward again in certain areas, whether it's relationships, whether it's your career, whether it's changing careers, getting on purpose, finding out what you're really here for, um, a lot happens over those 12 weeks. And the consistency in that program is what really um, hones it in, keeps moving and going with consistency Every other week, boom, boom, boom. We keep going in and moving more. So um, please message me if you're interested in that. And if you have any questions at all about meditation, please post them in the comments. I look forward to reading and answering them. And Kayla, um, so good to see you here. Thanks for joining in. We'll see you next week. Bye.